and it's our first week back from the Thanksgiving holidays. We hope everyone had a great break, even if it wasn't exactly what you expected. I know I enjoyed spending extra time with my kids. You know, I was thinking about a conversation I had with my daughter. She's in high school, she's 18 years old. And recently she was posting all these pictures on Instagram. And when I saw one of them, I got really stressed out. What was the picture of? It was her sitting in front of the house, smiling. Um, why would that stress you out? It sounds just like a picture that I would have in my house. Well, it wasn't so much the picture, it was the fact that it was online that worried me because she was sitting directly in front of where my house numbers are and the street name. So everybody knew what my address was. Anyone who saw that picture would know where we live. Oh, now I get it. So that wouldn't be safe. I'd like to think that if I wouldn't yell it in a grocery store, then I shouldn't post it online. I definitely would not yell my address in the middle of a crowded store, so I wouldn't post a picture that has it there. We had a long talk about keeping ourselves safe online, which made me think about all you Baldwin Bobcats. We're spending so much time on computers these days, and it's very easy to get comfortable and, and to forget some of the rules that we need to be following. Absolutely. So let's think back on what expected versus unexpected means, right? Different places call for different expectations. Some things are totally fine in person, like having a picture of your address hanging up in your living room. I can control who comes into my house and who sees that. However, if that same picture goes on the internet, I can't control how far it's going to go. The internet is a huge place with lots of different people on it. And don't forget, once something's out there, it's out there for good. Everybody has a technology tale. A technology tale? What's that? Let's read and find out. Today we're going to be reading The Technology Tale, a digital footprint story written by Julia Cook and illustrated by Anita Dufala. Hey there, I see you. It's me, your friend the screen. Please don't post those words. I don't like to be mean. Whoa, who's there? It's me, your screen. Screens don't talk. I do, I talk all the time and I have a lot to say. If you hit send or post those words, you will ruin your entire day and your entire tomorrow too. Huh, why? Because it will hurt your tail. My what? Your technology tail. I don't have a tail. Yes, you do. Everyone does. It follows you day and night. Everything you pass to others through me is attached to you for life. Everything you post sticks to your tail and becomes a part of you. Once you hit send, it's on there for good and there's nothing you can do. Seriously, I thought you knew. Nope. Didn't know that. Well, just look at your tail. See all these things. These are gifts you have given yourself. Your tail gets a gift when you post something nice or when you use your big words to help. But when you post things that are hurtful or mean, your tail gets a bruise, scratch, or tear. Then others feel bad because of you and the mean things you've chosen to share. And since I'm stuck in the middle of it, I turn into an irresponsible mean screen. And I worry about that a lot. What really stinks about my job is that over time, people start to develop keyboard courage. What's that? It means they post things online that they would never say or do to a person face to face. And some of that stuff can be really mean and inappropriate. And you can see they're all saying different things like you should be in the ugly hall of fame and shock me, say something intelligent or I'm rolling my eyes. Did you know that every time you post a put down, the person who gets it needs 10 pull ups just to feel better. That's 10 sincere compliments for just one put down. That's a whole lot. I am your screen. I see it all. Everything you send goes through me. See, here's the picture you posted last week when you and your friends climbed that tree. And they're saying, now that was a blast. This one's neat. It's a wonderful gift. It's that picture you took of a stray. 
You did all you could to find that kitty a home. Now that was a really great day. Here are the selfies you took with your friends on the day when you went to the mall. I can't believe how happy you look and that friend of yours is so tall. Yep, that was pretty awesome. Hey, how come I didn't get a gift for that one? Well, you left out one friend on purpose, then posted pictures to put her down. My friend watched her face when she saw them online and her smile turned into a frown. Oh yeah, she told her mom about it and her mom called my mom and I got grounded for two whole days. If you were my kid, I would have grounded you for two years. Well, I guess it's a good thing screens don't have kids. Hey, this wasn't a mean post. How come I got a scratch for it? Because it made the person you sent it to feel bad. Well, then she read it wrong. Some people are so sensitive. Yeah, that happens a lot. Unfortunately, I can only post words and a few symbols, not human expressions and hidden meanings that go along with them. Talking online is easy, but it will never be as powerful as face to face. Hopefully you humans will start to realize that. What's this? That's a hole. How did I get that? Holes come from posts that are not very smart, like when you share test answers in language arts. You know about that too? Yep. You got this hole for posting your address online. Now that was not very smart. And here's where you announced to the entire world you were headed to Yellowstone Park for 10 whole days. What about this one? Oh, that happened when you shared your password with your friends. Now, why would you go and do that? Your password is private information between me and you, not you and the whole wide world. How can I possibly protect you when that happens? There's no way you know about all that stuff. Oh yes, and it's not just me that knows. The people who know where to look can find everything you've ever sent. It's like all you have done in a book. You have to really think about what you're doing when you're posting online because that technology tale of yours will follow you through time. How? A technology tale that is bruised, scratched, or torn tells others that you are unkind. They won't want to hang out with you because they're afraid of what they might find. You'll end up dragging it around every single day and believe you me, a wounded tail will surely get in your way. Schools will tell you no whenever you try to apply. All the scratched bruises and tears on your tail will show them you've made others cry. When employees see holes and wounds, they won't want to hire you. They will assume you're irresponsible online and that you say stuff that's mean and untrue. But look, right now your tail is pretty good. You've posted so many great things. If you keep it up, you'll be surprised by the gifts a great tail can bring. Like what? Like a good right now and an even better later and a much happier screen. What's posted today will matter tomorrow. And it isn't just all about now. You have to think past the end of your nose and I can show you how. Put on a pair of think gloves before you touch the keys. They'll filter out the stuff that's not good. They look a lot like these. So you think, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? How do they work? Ask yourself those five questions. And if you can honestly answer yes, then post, forward, text, send, and tweet away. You won't even have to guess. But if the answer to any of those questions ends up being no, let the think glove stop your post. Hit delete, it's the best way to go. Always remember, you are in charge. You choose what goes on your tail. If you filter your words correctly, your actions will never fail. Then I won't have to worry about being the irresponsible mean screen ever again, which will make my life and yours a whole lot better. So I love the idea of a technology tale. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what that means to you? I think a technology tale is literally the trail that you leave on the internet. Every single thing you post online 
whether it's texting, whether it's pictures, um, you know, whether or not you're playing video games, uh, you know, everything is, is online. And so people can track it, like people can actually access it and kind of put together a picture of who you are based on what you're posting online. And something I know for my daughter right now, because she's applying to colleges, they're looking at her Instagram account. They're looking at her Snapchat account. They're looking at what she's posted on Facebook. They're looking at absolutely everything she has done. And she's applying for scholarships. And we'll see what happens. So hopefully she's been really careful with her tail these years. I hope so. So why do you think people are able to say mean things on a computer that they wouldn't necessarily say in person? You know, I've thought about this a lot because I've seen some people that I really respect. They've said some things online and I'm like, what are they doing? Why would they think it's okay to say that? And I think what I've decided is that a lot of people don't realize that there's somebody else on the other side, right? So if I'm just typing something, I don't really see the person's face when they read it. I don't think about how they're feeling and what I said can impact somebody who is maybe 30 miles away. Yeah. Okay, so let's dive more into expectations online. There are five things that we want you to remember whenever you're on a computer. First, what you say is permanent. What that means just is just like a Sharpie, if you write something online, it's there forever, permanently. And even if you delete it, other people may have taken pictures, saved it somewhere, so before you post, make sure it's something you really want everybody to see, even your grandparents. That's always a question that I ask myself is, would I be proud if my grandma and nanny saw this post, right? All right, number two, keep it private. This is a really big one to keep you safe. Don't ever post private things like your address anywhere online. Mm -hmm. Even if you think not very many people will see it, like if you're in a game chat room, once it's online, anybody can find it. So again, if you wouldn't yell it at a grocery store, you shouldn't put it online. Yeah, number three, keyboard courage. There are different types of keyboard courage. Some people find that when they're behind the keyboard, they can say mean things because they can't see the person on the other side. And that's not okay. Your words still have an impact. Instead, have the courage to stand up for what's right and post only kind things online. Number four, know who you're talking to. Remember, you always have to know who's on the other end. If you're playing a game online and someone you don't know tries to chat with you, you might assume that it's a kid just like you. However, it's easy to pretend to be someone else online. Always make sure that you check with an adult and only talk to people that you've met in person. Last one, fact or fiction? And we're dealing a lot with this right now in, in uh, everything that's going on in our country. Don't assume that everything you read online is true. Always check multiple sources and look at who posted the information. Is it a news source? Is it reliable? Do, don't share anything until you have done your research. If you keep these five things in mind, you'll be able to be safe and have fun online. <laughs> We also have some videos to watch and to learn more about staying safe. Teachers and students, if you click on the link in Blend right underneath this video, you'll have lots of stuff to watch and learn about cyber safety. All during the month of December, we're gonna be talking about how to keep ourselves safe. Safe at school, safe at home, safe on the computer, and safe in our hearts. It's important to remember that our biggest tool to keep us safe are the people who love us. Who in your life keeps you safe? Who can you talk to no matter what and they will listen and help? These people are called your safety network. People in your safety network will always protect you. And if you are worried about something, you should talk to them for advice and help. My mom is in my safety network because she listens to me. Wow. Um, my sister is in my safety network because I know that I can tell her anything. I can trust her and I know that she'll help me. My mom is my safety network. She's always somebody that I can go to and I know that she'll give me really good advice. I would say my mom and my husband are in my safety network because they're always very supportive and they always listen to what I have to say and they're always looking out for my best interest. 
Ms. Fulmer is in my safety network because I can trust her with problems big and small. This week, Baldwin has gone back to virtual learning for all students. This might be the same as you've stayed home all year for you, or it might be a little different because you chose to come to school. Either way, we want you to remember that you have access to your safety network even at home. Remember, you can either click on the student button and request a time to schedule to meet with us, or you can hop into Ms. Alexander's room or Ms. Holly's room at any time of the day. Now, sometimes we won't be there because we'll be busy with another student, but a lot of times we will, and we can help you right then. Other resources to keep you safe online are also on our Blend page. All you gotta do is go find the parent resources with a parent and they can walk you through things. You can also use our Calm Corner for whenever you're feeling frustrated. Remember, you can click on each thing and it will help you with a different tool. Finally, don't forget we've got a way to get those wiggles out. Come to our wiggle room and click on a video. It'll have you moving and grooving and getting all that energy that you need out so you're ready to go with the rest of your virtual learning day. So, who can you talk to when you have a problem? Can you think of someone at school or at home who is always there for you or who can be there for you? We hope that you're able to think of a few people, but we want to remind you there's two people on your screen right now who are ready to listen no matter what. Thanks for joining us today. We can't wait to see you again next week. Be safe for your online. Follow our rules and you'll do fine. Be safe for your online. Ain't nobody fooling me. Be safe for your online. Follow our rules and you'll do fine. Next thing they're asking, hey, where you live at? I thought to myself, I'm not sure about this. I heard a thing or two about online risks. I'm not gonna be another one of those fools. I'm sticking to the online safety rules. What? Be safe, never give your full name. Even when playing on an online game. Yeah. Don't give out your contact details, number, address, location, or email. Right. No info in your username. Someone could figure out your riddle game. Basically, keep your personal info safe. Don't let it end up in cyberspace. Be safe. Be safe for your